2023 is our last year before we achieve financial independence. And in order to ensure that we are ready in 2024, we need to be putting as much as possible into the market this year to ensure that we reach our $40,000 goal of dividend income by the end of the year. Stick around in this video, we're gonna let you know exactly what we're gonna be buying this year to ensure we meet our goal. We are excited about sharing our journey to financial independence. As Christine mentioned before, our goal is to reach $40,000 by year 2023. If you go back to 2022, we ended the year with $25,000 in dividend uh, income. And you can see, how come are you guys gonna be able to make 15,000, <laughs> is it 15, 25, 34? Yeah, 15,000 yeah. more in dividend income. It's based on some of those companies that we wanted to buy in 2023. Yes, just to mention, we yeah. were, if, we were set to be earning, at the end of last year, we were set to be earning close to 30000 but yeah. we had received physically 25000 That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So if we kept holding all of the stuff that we hold in, or held at the end of the year, this year, at the end of 2023, we would be very close to 30000 yeah. So it looks like we need to come up with fifteen. Ten is still a lot, but... Yeah closer to 10,000 that we need to start making up the difference. <laughs> and you can see that by following our journey. If you are not subscribed yet, that's a great opportunity because every month we share the dividends on how much we have received. And not only that, I am also trying to keep you guys posted as I share some shorts on YouTube <laughs> shorts that I'm learning on how to use that and also on our community tab. So you can take a look and you can follow our journey to financial independence if you feel inclined. Yeah, this year one of our main goals, and we might be really bad Canadians, but we have not been contributing the maximum amounts to our TFSAs. We've been really focusing on our Smith Maneuver investment account, which has really paid off at the end of mm -hmm. our tax years here for both of us. But this year our goal is to really start piling the money as much as possible into our TFSAs to really start priming those and getting those ready for future growth. That's a great point because if you are new to invest and you should do the opposite. As I did <laughs> say, it's not financial advice, but we are sharing you know, our yeah. situation and the reasons. There's a reason to why we yeah. had to invest first on the margin account. But in summary, it was because of our income and how much yeah. we were receiving. So it was more beneficial for us to reduce our income. As we are getting close to financial independence, we have a lot of room in our TFSAs. And, and this is the account that I believe that most of the money is going to go to. Yeah, it's probably the golden account here in Canada. So yeah. this year, that's our goal. Let's see. What is going to happen? We are going to share with you some of our dividend stocks that we have in our portfolio. We are going to tell you which ones we are planning to increase. And if we sit until the end of the video, there is a new position that we are adding to our portfolio. And I'm going to tell you the secrets about that position. In a few seconds, you can use the chapters if you want to, <laughs> but come with us as we explain the rationale behind that. Currently, we own quite a few positions in all of our accounts. Just really quick, we own QQQ, ITOT, XAW, and Shopify. These positions, we don't really own these uh, for dividend or distribution purposes. Some of them do pay a little bit of money, but really these are our growth positions. As we are getting close to 2024, we have to create ways in receive income as much as possible. And as a result, we recently started investing in two high dividend ETFs, which are HYLD and HGIF. Mm -hmm. The reason is basically to receive more income. So we're not going to go through every single dividend stock that we own, but if you've watched any of our videos, you know that we have a significant exposure to the financial sector here in Canada. So really our goal in 2023 is to increase our positions in other sectors. And the first one that we're going to increase is Amira, which is in the utility sector. Um, we are going to need to increase Amira quite a bit because we actually sold out of Canadian utilities. We no longer have Canadian utilities. Mm -hmm. So Amira is our only utility stock at the moment. 
We really do like Amira. It currently has a dividend yield of 5.06%. And its dividend CAGR, its uh, compound annual growth rate for its dividend, is quite nice, right? Its 15-year CAGR is at 7.5%, which is really good. We're confident in this dividend, and we really like this particular company. It's a, a globally diverse company. It, it has operations in Canada, North America, as well as the Caribbean. So it sort of plays into our global aspect as well. Our plan is to end the year with right around 950 shares, which is going to come out to about $2,600 of dividend income for the year. And that's yeah. if Amira doesn't increase its dividend from where it is today. Yeah, which we hope that is going to increase the year. It usually increases every year, so they're mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing how much we're going to get paid by Amira. The next company that we wanted to increase our dividends in 2023 and buy more stocks is Enbridge. Enbridge is part of the energy sector here in Canada. We are satisfied with what Enbridge has been providing us in terms of return. Right now, it does represent around 9% of our portfolio, and the dividends are around 6.4 or 6.5% on Japan. And as the time that we do record this video today is around 6%. Another great thing about Enbridge is they have been able to increase its dividends for the last 28 years, if I'm not mistaken. And quite recently, at the end of last year, we've got another dividend increase of 3.2%, which is I mean, we can't complain. No, I mean, it doesn't match inflation, but I don't think anything's going to match inflation this past year. So 3.2% is still a really good increase. Our goal is to end 2023 with 1,200 shares of Ambridge. And by having 1,200 shares of Ambridge, the dividend that you're expecting to receive, it will be around $4,000. So a significant portion of money coming in. Yes, yes. I'm not, I might be wrong, but I believe it is like the highest one that we have. I don't know. I have to take a look at my numbers, but you don't know. Yeah, definitely up there. The third one that we're going to be investing quite heavily in this year is TELUS. We own two telecoms, Bell Canada and TELUS, but this year we're going to be concentrating on TELUS. TELUS is a really socially conscious and environmentally conscious telecom, which is something that Jeanne and I really kind of can get behind and believe yeah. in. So this is a company we really feel good about supporting. Um, some of the other good things about TELUS is they have the numbers. <laughs> yeah, the numbers, right? Currently, their dividend yield is a really nice 4.95%. It has a moderate PE ratio of around 19.56%, which is good compared to the other telecoms in the in the country. And I think it leads to room for growth as well for, for TELUS. As well, if you look at their dividend CAGR, their dividend growth over the past uh, 5, 10, and 15 years, you're going to notice a really steady increase all the way up 15 years at 8.6%. So we're confident TELUS is going to be able to continue their dividend growth as well moving forward into the future. So our goal by the end of 2023 is to end the year with 1,900 shares of TELUS, which with today's dividend is around $2,600 a year. But one really neat fact about TELUS is it's actually it's actually committed to trying to raise its dividend twice a year mm -hmm. up to 2025. So who knows, that dividend could actually grow a bit more. We'll see what happens in the, in the coming few months and see if the dividend gets raised. Yes, and if you have made your calculation as I'm doing as we speak, so it's like 4,500 out of Ambridge plus 2,600 of TELUS is around 7,000 more in our dividend income. So that's yeah. how we are able to make those commitments with you. Hopefully, don't <laughs> buy because we are buying. Do no. your own research. There are more indicators that we do use in evaluating a stock. Yeah. We are not experts whatsoever, guys. We are going to talk to you now about our new investment company so our new addition to our portfolio in 2023 do you like burgers <laughs> actually really like this company guys <laughs> <laughs> the best part is a wrap burger especially with lettuce you know take the buns out you know instead of the bun have your burger with lettuce and i was not i mean i didn't know about this company before when i moved to canada 
20 years ago. But Christine introduced me to that company. She says, you got to lose weight. We, this is actually <laughs> one of the plans that we have for 2023. If you have not seen our investment goals for 2023, so losing weight is one of them. And that's <laughs> why when we go and eat out with a lower price, we go to that company. Yes. And so the company is actually a &W, Revenue Royalty Income. So it's a little bit of a different um, investment avenue for us. It actually falls into the consumer cyclical sector, which we have nothing Zero exposure, in. yep. But we like this particular company or fund for a number of reasons. This particular stock or fund trades under the ticker aw-un.to. This is a royalty income fund. Um, a lot of people might like it to a REIT, but it's not. A&W is actually collecting royalties from all of their restaurants. They collect around 3% of the um, profit from all of their restaurants, and it goes into this fund. And then this fund then pays those royalties out to its shareholders, which hopefully will be us in the coming few weeks and months. And they pay out a significant portion, in fact, most of the royalties after they pay for their expenses. So it's interesting because this, like a REIT, comes out monthly. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's a different concept for us. We did a lot of looking into this. We did a lot of research on this particular one. And we've, it's interesting to us. And we kind of are looking forward to seeing how it develops in the coming months and years for us. By the time that we do record this video, the beginning of 2023, they have around 1,100 restaurants across Canada. And based on those numbers that we saw, they are planning to increase even more. a and is the company that fits our criteria. Right? Yeah, it's really, and we didn't realize it, but it's almost, it's the second most popular burger restaurant in Canada. And when you look at their numbers and you look at their growth, they've been adding restaurants consistently to their operations mm -hmm. for the past decade or more. Um, and they only really saw a decline in revenue in 2020, when a lot of those stores and everybody else got hit with uh, the COVID effect. <laughs> we'll call it the COVID effect. But really, their monthly distributions and year-over-year -year distributions have been increasing, been increasing. Yeah. yeah, consistently for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. And you might be asking, how much are you guys planning to buy off a and by the end of 2023? You're going to start small, so it's going to be around, I believe, 500 shares. And by adding 500 shares to our portfolio, we might be close to $1,000 yes, $1, per year on mm -hmm. dividend income. So that's the new company that we wanted to buy on our portfolio. Yeah, and just a question for you guys. Which account would you purchase this stock in. But I'm going to pause the video for a few seconds and after that I want to hear, you know, write it down in your comments below what or where would you buy this stock. Originally we had full plans of buying this inside of one of our margin accounts. But we did our research and we started looking into it a lot more and we discovered that these are actually non-eligible distributions or dividends. So if we were to purchase these in a taxable account, they would not receive the, the preferential tax treatment yeah. um, that a lot of our other Canadian dividends do. Therefore, we're going to be putting this particular stock inside of our TFSA. So all that room we talked about earlier, we're going to start trying to fill it up with this stock along with some others. But where did we get the research from? Well, I have received quite a few <laughs> questions from you guys asking, how do you decide which company you wanted to buy or not? First of all, as we did see at the beginning of the video, not financial advisor, not experts whatsoever. And in moments like this, we need to rely on the experts. <laughs> <laughs> which is not us. <laughs> which is not us, right? We have a partnership with 5i Research, and which is one of the companies that we use uh, for you know, looking and researching stocks. 5i, if you have not heard of 5i before, they usually, it's a Canadian company and they have you know, on their portfolio Canadian and US stocks. And this is usually when 
we wanted to take a look and see which kind of companies we wanted to add to our portfolio, we rely on. We go to 5i, read the comments, they have a forum available for us, which are of course, you know, uh, members of 5i. And we can also ask questions as we want to. And this is really important, right? Because we just told you we're not financial advisors and we're not experts. So we have a lot of questions and I kind of feel like 5i is just an extension of this type of community as mm -hmm. well. It's just another community where you can go in and ask the questions where you might feel like you're a little silly or you just don't know the answer to. And there's a lot of people, including the people that work at 5i there to be able to assist you with those questions, help you answer them. Yeah, at the end of the day, they are not telling you go and buy this and yeah. go and buy that. All that they do, they provide a report and we are the ones who decide yeah. I'm gonna buy, I'm not gonna buy. Yeah. Right? They help so, you understand the information yeah. that they, they provide for you, right? Because a lot of numbers, a lot of terminology mm -hmm. that we're not used to. No, no. But they're there to help walk you through it along with the other people on the forum. So yeah. it's been really good for us. Exactly. The other thing that we really like about 5i is the fact that they do have like the model portfolios. They have a uh, an income portfolio, which is how I end up finding a &W, as the same way that they have a growth portfolio. So it can basically take a look at the components that they do have within those portfolios. Mm -hmm make your decision. If you're interested, I think Jeanne's going to put a link down below oh, yeah, to like true. a sample report, something that you might get from them if you were a member and looking for information on a company. To summarize, it's going to be A&W, Emira, A&W, Emira, Enrich, and Pelos. Yeah. <laughs> You better get that right. I know. <laughs> it's been like topic of conversation for weeks. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean that those are the only ones that we are going to buy. We keep doing as we have been doing with XAW, but it's going to be a small amount, you know, like as it's 250 bucks per month. We mm -hmm. keep doing the HYLG and HIF, but those are the ones that you're going to invest on. more. Yep. Yeah. So that's the video for this week. Those are the three, four companies that we're going to be adding in a big way to our portfolio this year to mm -hmm. ensure that in 2024 we reach our $40,000 goal of dividends and we can yeah. reach financial independence. Yes. If you guys have any suggestions of other stocks, leave them down below. As always, do your own research. This is not financial advice. Take a look and make sure that this is <laughs> what we're looking for and I'm going to end the video. Bye! <laughs> achieved an increase uh, from that specific from no I have to say that let me say this last one again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is the first one <laughs> no you did this I'm what I need to oh, do okay talk more. so this particular fund trays on we hope you guys had a great week and we'll see you soon Yes, if you do have any other suggestions or recommendations, okay, I'm not gonna say so long, right? No, no, it's just I keep wrapping it up, but then you keep going with oh. it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Bye. No, no, no. no. <laughs>